In part 2 of chapter 5, we would like to discuss the plane frame analysis. Plane structures is made up of rigidly connected members. Each member can be treated as a beam. In this case, axial loads exist, thus it will cause axial deformations or axial displacement in the frame structure. For example, in this case, we can see that in this structure, we have two beams, beam 1 and beam 2. So beam 1 has been loaded with distributed load where it will cause a bending to this bar as well as this bar. We also have bending and at the same time, it will also be applied with a dis uh, axial loads that will cause axial deformation or axial displacement. If we just focus on the upper part here, we can see here, in this case, this beam will have bending and at the same time it will have axial displacement as like in the bar chapter. So we would say that this structure is a combination between bar problem and the beam problem. So for the K matrix, we just need to, it is just a combination between the bar K matrix and the beam K matrix. Thus, by combining the stiffness metric for a beam and 1D bar elements, give the stiffness metric for a frame element. So in this case, we have K bar, which is start from UI and UJ. And for K beam, we have VI, theta I, VJ and theta J. So the arrangement of the K frame should start from UI, VI, theta I, which is x, y, and z, uh, this deformation in x direction, y direction, and rotation in z direction. And followed by the second nodes, uj, vj, and theta j, as shown in this matrix. So in this case, we, we can see that this ae over l is equal to k. So, for example, for this first term is k, negative k, negative k, k. So, the first term, ui and ui, we have k here. So, we check ui and ui, we have k. Second term, ui and uj, we have negative k. So, check ui and uj, we have negative k. And then, uj and uj, negative k, so u, sorry, uj and ui, negative k, and the last one is between uj and uj, which is k, so uj and uj, we have k, so k bar does, is not related to uh, v and theta, that's why all these value are zero, while for k beam, it started from vi and vi so check vi and vi we have 12 b here so b what is b b is ae over l cube as shown in this uh, equation down here okay that is b so that we can simplify our k matrix and then in this case is not related to u k beam so that's why all the in the u uh, column the value is zero so we just need to plug in into this k matrix according the position shown in this matrix for example theta and theta i and vi we have 6 l b so theta i and vi so we have cl b so this is um, k matrix for a frame elements however elements of the frame structure can be in different orientation for example, if you take one single frame element and we know that at one local node, we have three degree of freedom, which is two displacement component, U and V, and one rotational component, which is theta. For example, in this frame at node I, we have this displacement in axial direction, which is UI, and VI here in the local direction, which is perpendicular to the beam. And at the same time, we have a rotation, theta i here, in the z directions. At the same time, 
because this beam also will move or deform in the global direction, which is U capital I, V capital I, and theta capital I. Okay, if we take at this point. And if you want to resolve this global direction into global direction, for example, we will obtain this equation at not I. So at not I, if we resolve this U capital I to this direction, so we need to cos beta. So that's why we have U1, Ui cos beta. And for V1, if we want to resolve to this direction, so we need to sine with beta. So that's why we have V1, Vi sine beta. While if we want to resolve into this direction, into this um, local direction of V, so the, this Ui here okay, will move to this position, which is in this axis. So we will have u i sines beta. So we have theta here. So it should be sines. And then the, neg the negative here, because we have neg uh, opposite direction as compared to local vi here. And for vi capital I here, to resolve to vi here, we just need to cos eta. So that's why we have V capital I cos eta. While for the rotational components, in the local or global direction, they have no difference as it rotates in Z directions. So that's why theta small i is equal to theta capital I. If we resolve at point J, we're going to get the same equation, only now the notation is for J, but the rest will be the same arrangement or the same way to resolve those components from global to local directions. Okay, so finally, we will have six equations from Ui, Vi, theta i, Uj, Vj, and theta j. So this equation, we can transform into a matrix form like this. Okay, so we have the first equation is coming from the first equation here. So we have U1, Ui, U capital I times cos beta, which is C, and V capital I times sin beta, which is we call it S. So in this case, we call it cos beta equal to C and sin beta is equal to s for the first equation we see here we have u capital i times c so that's why we have u times c second term we have vi times s so we have vi times s and the rest is zero as not related in the first equation while for the second equation we have negative ui times sine beta meaning that ui times negative s so that's why we have ui times negative s second term here we have v capital i times c so we have v i capital i times c and the rest is zero as is none related to second equations for the third equation is theta i small i is equal to theta capital I. So meaning that in this case, theta local is equal to 1, which is meaning that equal to theta global. And the same thing we do for the equation 3, 4, and 6 for uj, vj, and theta j. So where we have uh, c and s for uj, for Vj, we have negative S and C according to this equation here. So, in short, we can call this matrix as matrix UL equal to matrix L times matrix UG, which is the local deformation equal to 
the transformation times the global deformations. So matrix L is called transformation matrix. Okay, so the, the middle part here, what we call it as matrix, matrix L. Okay, and again, we call C as equal to cos beta and S is equal to sine beta. So with that, we can simplify our equations. In order to define the elements difference matrix for frame elements that having different orientation, we will use the internal strain energy. Like the derivation of a thrust element, the element strain energy in the local direction is given by these equations, where previously we have defined the U local is equal to matrix L times U global. So by replacing this term into this equation, then we're going to have a new terms for the element strain energy for frame element that involve only global directions. So remember, when we have a transpose matrix, we have to change the position of these two matrix that in the column. So that we will have a new arrangement of the element strain energy for frame elements. By comparing between these two equations, we can see here the K is located in the middle between the U. So same thing here, if we look on this equation, we have U on the left and U on the right side. So meaning that the middle part here will be the K matrix for the global coordinates given by this equation. So the K frame is L transpose times the K local times the L matrix. So if we expand this expression, so we will have K frame is equal to L transpose, which is the transformation matrix. We just need to change the column become row and row becomes column. Multiply with the K local, which is the combination of bar and the beam K matrix. Multiply with the transformation matrix. Next, if we solve this operation, then we will have our K global matrix for the frame element. Again, C here is equal to cos beta, S is equal to sin beta, K in this equation is equal to AE over L, and B in this equation is equal to EI over L cube. Next, we would like to discuss the element load factor. Suppose a uniformly distributed load P acts on a frame element, it needs to be transformed into equivalent forces and moments. In fact, it is very similar to the beam element that we have discussed previously. Only in this case, we added the X component, which is FIX and FJX to consider the load in X direction. But as in this case, we do not have any loads in X direction, that's why the expression for the X component is always zero. So that we will have the equivalent force and moment as shown in this figure. However, it's not all the time the distributed loads acting on the global directions. So sometimes the distributed load also can apply in the local direction as shown in this figure. So at first, we have to obtain the equivalent force and moments by using this equation so that the equivalent force and moment will act on the local direction which is perpendicular to the beam, right? For example, for not I and not J. So we have force which is in the local direction and moment is always rotated in Z directions. So in order to solve the problem, to obtain the displacement in global directions. So next, we have to resolve this local force into the global force. So by knowing this angle is beta, so if we solve this angle also beta, so we can 
resolve this force into x and y direction. So by resolve this force into y direction, so we just need to times with cos beta. So here, PL over 2 cos beta. So if we resolve into x direction, so it will go into this direction. So if we resolve into this direction, so meaning that it will be have opposite direction to this one. So the value for the force in x direction will be PL negative PL2 PL over 2 times sine beta. Similarly, for the second node, if we resolve this force into y direction, we will have PL over 2 cos beta. And if we resolve this force into x direction, it will go into this direction, which is opposite. Then we will have negative PL over 2 times sine beta. For the moment, it won't change okay, as local or global. It will always rotate in z direction. Okay, so the equivalent force and moments in the global coordinate can be obtained by resolving the local forces into global directions.